Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Bittner. I'm a junior at Providence College. Uh, I'm a biology major and I'm from Cranston, Rhode Island. Uh, my name is Kevin Lee. Uh, I am also a biology major, class of 2022, and I'm from Portland, Maine. And my name is Ibrahim Abahara. I am a senior uh, biology major, um, and I'm from Johnson, Rhode Island. Uh, this is our presentation on ER stress and C. elegans. Um, for those of you who don't know, a C. elegans is a microscopic nematode, and it's used for various different sci science experiments. Um, for this case, we're going to be talking about ER stress and protein homeostasis. Um, this occurs when the ER is impaired and can lead to misfolded proteins. The protein in particular that we're going to be talking about here is BAX inhibitor 1. Uh, this is a transmembrane protein that's localized to the endoplasmic reticulum. As you can see in the top right corner of this graph, uh, where it says BI1, that is BAX inhibitor 1, and it's on the... Um, the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum in the cell. Uh, misfolded proteins may cause the cell to function improperly, causing cell death. And BAX inhibitor protein responds to ER stress by inhibiting BAX-induced cell death. This is why we're studying C. elegans, because we can look at the survival rates. And since endoplasmic reticulum is an anti-apoptotic gene, which means we're looking at cell death, we can study survival rates in C. elegans. Um, so next, I just want to talk again about BAX inhibitor because that is uh, really important for you guys to understand and visualize what it is in order to uh, understand this project that we did. Um, what is BAX inhibitor? BAX inhibitor is a calcium channel that regulates calcium levels in the ER and the cytosol. Um, we've done studies in, at the Providence College in yeast and also in um, C. elegans, and we've been able to find out that BAX inhibitor 1 is a transmembrane protein which transports calcium from the ER to the cytosol in the cell. And if you look at this graph that was put together by Ibrahim, um, the middle of the membrane is BAX inhibitor. And you can see the calcium going through it because it's a transmembrane protein. Um, increased calcium in the cytosol increases BAX protein, which prevents the cell from BAX-induced apoptosis, which is when the cell dies. And that's why we're looking at it in worms, because we want to study when the cell dies and what happens with BAX inhibitor. Okay, uh, the next protein that uh, we are interested in is called IRE1. Um, so this protein, so as Mike has described about ER stress, uh, when the cell has, um, has a, I guess when it, when the cell detects stress, ER stress specifically, um, it has to respond appropriately. And the way it's, it's called, so the way it responds is called the unfolded protein response. So obviously, for example, if someone is set on fire, they are going to detect that there's something wrong and they're going to do something about it. So this is the way the cell does, uh, responds uh, to ER stress and it's called the unfolded protein response. It increases uh, uh, it upregulates certain genes that are necessary for cell survival. So if the cell is in danger, then it will try to recombat this stress by upregulating genes uh, for survival. And to do this, the cell needs this thing called IRE1. IRE1 is what detects the, IRE, uh, the ER stress. So it's kind of like a, a, a smoke detector. Um, in that it detects that there's danger going on and therefore it can respond appropriately. And just to add, um, the reason why we're studying these complicated sounding proteins, so in, in cancer cells, they, they aren't behaving um, as they are in normal cells. And we find that some of these proteins such as BAX inhibitor is linked to hu some human cancers. So, uh, because we don't know that much about BAX inhibitor, this is why we're studying it. And the more studies we can get in it in yeast, in C. elegans, in bacteria, the, the better uh, understanding we have of it and the better understanding we have of, of certain cancers. So uh, our goal for our project was to uh, determine if BAX inhibitor is regulating ER stress through the uh, 
IRE1 unfolded protein response pathway. And with that, we also want to see what factors are regulating VAX inhibitor expression. And because of this, further research will uh, provide questions and or provide insight on how VAX inhibitor is regulated in cancer. So uh, before we start, uh, the top photo you see up there is a microscopic image of the C. elegans. And what we did here was we, we grew three types of worms, with the first one being a wild type worm that has not been altered, a uh, Bax inhibitor loss of function, and IRE1 loss of function worms. And in each of those three groups, we are plating them onto three different plates, with the first one being a control, uh, second one being a low concentration, and the third one being a high concentration of tunicomycin slash DTT. And I also want to mention that uh, tunicomycin DTT is a drug that allows these uh, these worms to undergo ER stress. So after these adults lay these eggs, we want to uh, remove them because we're only focused on the developmental stages of these eggs. And uh, we're also trying to assess like how many of these um, eggs will actually reach adult stages when undergoing ER stress. Okay, so these are the results that we got from the previously, uh, as Kevin mentioned, the, the uh, experiment. Uh, so these are the results that we got. So we have three different worms, as uh, Kevin has mentioned, the wild type worms, which are not altered. And we have the IRE1 and Bax inhibitor worms. These mean that, um, so these worms don't have IRE1, which is necessary for ER stress. And these worms don't have Bax inhibitor. Now, we can expect that because the, the worms don't have IRE1, uh, that they are not be able to respond to stress. So just like if you don't have a smoke detector at home, then chances are there's a higher risk of um, a fire being undetected, for example. So we expect that these worms, the ones that don't have IRE1, to have a lower uh, survivability than um than the control, for example, the wild type worms. And so what we found is at a high con higher concentration of tunicomycin or ER stress, that we find um, there's a significantly lower survivability or the worms that have reached adulthood in the BAX inhibitor worms. And the same is true for um, IRE1. Um, this is important because if we want to figure out what... Uh, if, if Bax inhibitor is involved in the um, UPR pathway, um, then this, uh, this experiment will tell us that. And so because we see a similar result in a, at a higher concentration uh, of tunicomycin with IRE1 and Bax inhibitor worms, both significantly decrease, that this suggests that they may act in the same pathway. Um, and this is, this is what we have concluded from our trial. And um, so uh, our plan is to uh, repeat these try this re repeat these experiments so that we can confirm these results. Um, and other projects that uh, we that we want to do are a lifespan experiment uh, on kind of worms to discover other phenotypes or other effects. Um, this is also a similar experiment on develop the development of worms. And another thing that we want to do is, is cross worms, uh, which means basically uh, we want to make a double mutant worm. So a worm that has both back standard, uh loss of function and IRE loss of function so that we can infer the experiment and confirm um, these results. And then the last thing uh, we all, we're also interested in doing is tagging GFP or really any kind of fluorescent protein to back inhibitor. Uh, so normally we can't really under the microscope. But uh, in order to do that, we tag or link to it a protein that is fluorescent, so that those that we can see, and we can that's uh, we're able to track down where the proteins are in the cell. So we want to do this for uh, uh, to Bax inhibitors so that we can see where it is um, in the worm. Finally, uh, some acknowledgments. We would like to thank our advisors, Dr. Melissa Silvestrini and Father Nicanor Ostriaco. They both have been mentors to all of us throughout our careers at Providence College. 
Um, we would like to thank also the Providence College Biology Department and Amy Goggin for giving us this wonderful opportunity to present our work. And of course, the, the Center of Engage with, Engage with Learning and uh, for everyone else who's uh, watching, um, yeah, all of us, you guys made us a, gave us a wonderful opportunity uh, not only to work in this environment and also to present our work um, and share it with our friends. So thank you so much. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free. Thank you all very much. This is wonderful, really exciting work. Uh, can you just talk a little bit more about um, why this, this particular species of worm was the right organism to do this type of research on? Sure. Uh, so C. elegans or the nematode, they're actually really great for experiments because for really not just uh, specifically this experiment, these are just scientific research because they have, uh, first of all, they're um, transparent. So that's uh, in, in some, and in some cases you can study uh, like nervous system uh, or, or other or organs, but uh, C. elegans because of their very rapid, um, you can say generation. So they were able to, reproduce very quickly that you can be able to track down the changes throughout generations. Um, so because of it's, it's really flexible and you can study generations of the worms, um, it's really helpful for experiments. Uh, 